So apparently the UK has over 2,000 ISA millionaires. That's anyone with over a million quid inside their stocks and shares individual savings account. Now, I think we can all be jealous of those kind of returns because they haven't been able to get there just because they've put money in. And in fact, if they just saved the cash away, their returns would have been a lot worse. So how have they done it? What makes them special? How much have they got in total? And how can us mere mortals also look to replicate their success? Because honestly, I think a lot more people can and should be part of that elite club of tax-free millionaires, including you. This is an interesting topic at first because you might think, well, all you need to be an ISA millionaire is just have loads of money and keep putting it in. But then you forget that ISA accounts have a limit each year of how much you can actually contribute. And although right now you can put a maximum of £20,000 in across all of your different ISAs, that's cash, lifetime, stocks and shares, or even the innovative finance ISA, that wasn't always the case. For people like me, when I started investing, I didn't even use an ISA. I had no idea what it was, so I just used a general investing account and still do. But for those lucky few who took advantage of it, the limits have actually changed over the years. You see, the concept of a tax-free ISA for stocks and shares investing actually came about in 1999, just in time for the dot-com crash. Great. Not really an ideal time to start investing. I bet a lot of people just called it a day after that. Anyway, during that year, the limit you could invest was £7,000 in stocks and shares, and that limit remained the same until 2010 when it was increased to 10,200. And then finally, after gradually increasing over the next few years with inflation, it was raised to the 20,000 pounds that we have today from around 2017. If you were able to max out all of your contributions for every single year, but kept it in cash, your account value would be actually worth today 266,650 pounds. So what's the secret of how more than 2,000 people have managed to amass an account value of over a million quid. Well, that's clearly the power of investing at work. Four times your money since 2000, when the S&P has done around three times, now those are some very nice gains. How have they done it? Now, I don't have one with me. That's an ISA millionaire, by the way. It's not like I've got one handy that I can just wheel out from the cupboard and just ask investing questions. People like this are probably off sunning themselves on their fourth holiday of the year or heading out for a round of golf on Monday morning once the rush hour is over. However, after doing a bit of research, I've managed to find some of them from different brokers' platforms which include their own tips for investors as well as what they've actually invested in. Let's take a look. Hargreaves Lanzan and AJ Bell have both done some research on this topic, asking all of their millionaire ices for some of their tips and sharing what they've invested in to get them to the Seven Figure Investing Club. One of the most common tips they give is about making sure that you're investing for the long term. Here's two on screen now with some very valid points. I think Mr. F is bang on the money here when he says that you need to forget the short term noise and focus on the future. As we all know in the short term, anything can happen, especially to a share price, and it can become completely disconnected from the fundamentals of the company. Mr. M here also shares a really important insight, highlighting that you need to be willing to invest in something for a long period of time. In his example, he says 10 years, as well as forgetting about it too. This might be something worth thinking about when you're next doing your own research or about to make a trade. If you're enjoying the video so far, please don't forget to hit the like button for me. And why not drop a comment below? It really does help out small channels like this one. Anyway, let's get back to the video. The next one's obvious, but still worth a reminder. If you can use all of your allowances each year, then use it. If you don't use it, you'll lose it as the new tax year starts. Now, I know for the vast majority of us, that there's no way we can put away £20,000 per year, let alone even half of that or even a quarter of that. But the point stands to remind us that we should do our best to take advantage of it. And finally, from their list of tips, and one of the most important in my view, in fact, I even did a whole video on this topic recently, making sure we don't overtrade. Overtrading comes with two costs and it can really take its toll on us investors. First off, it costs us more in fees, especially on legacy platforms. And secondly, if we keep trying to time the market, we're very likely to miss up as it's impossible to time the market with any kind of consistency. And let's remind ourselves that when we're trying to find the worst days and the best days, they often fall really close to one another. So before you know it, you would have missed it anyway. So this is all well and good, but it still begs the question, what have they actually been investing in? Because we know that they've needed to get some pretty good returns to get here. Here's some of their top picks. Let's take a look. There's a mix here of different stocks and funds too, but we don't know what the exact mix is or how the best performers hold their portfolio. From a share perspective in individual companies, we're seeing lots of big hitters in the FTSE 100, large dividend paying stocks, which aren't necessarily hype or growth stocks, but they do consistently deliver growth over long periods of time. You've got companies like AstraZeneca, BP, National Grid and Rio Tinto, most of whom trade and get a lot of their earnings across the globe, selling their products and services to people even during periods of recession. One thing which surprised me here was not seeing any big US tech stocks, but 
This could just be reflecting the bias of the investors here who are based in the UK and probably feel more comfortable with UK companies. From a funds perspective, this part's really interesting too. Here's some of the popular funds they've invested in. A common theme seems to be special situation funds where managers are actively looking for distressed companies or huge upsides and also funds that invest globally who just want to find good companies regardless of where they're situated. I recognize a few of the names here and I think I've had some of them in my portfolio at some point but not held them long enough or a very long time. One thing that's interesting is the lack of broadly diversified low-cost index fund in this mix which did surprise me but then remember we are looking at a small number of people who have managed to pick the winning funds and pick the winning stock so Bear in mind that there's a bit of survivorship bias going on here. Remember that in the long run, actively managed funds have an extremely poor track record of beating the index, and whether that's the S&P 500 or even something close to home like the FTSE All Share. I'm really glad they've managed to pick these winners, but be careful about assuming what your results might be. Picking the same ones now, we've got no idea what could happen next. One thing worth mentioning here as well for a bit of reality check, this elite group of 2,000 or so people here in the UK with million pound plus isopots aren't 30 or 40 somethings, their average age is actually 72. And what this tells me is that everything we bang on about in long-term investing is true. It's not something that's gonna make you rich quickly. It takes a lot of time, a lot of patience, and a lot of consistency. But don't let that discourage you. Honestly, that's not what the video's about. It's actually a reminder that some of the secrets to being a nicer millionaire are not really that complicated and something that I can hopefully replicate in the years to come. And don't forget that on top of your allowances for your stocks and shares ISO of 20K per year, You've also got a couple of others that could help you build your wealth along the way too. Firstly, you've got your dividend allowances to use, which is in the current tax year, it's £2,000. Meaning that you can earn £2,000 before you've got to pay any taxes on dividends from your investments. At an average dividend yield of say 5%, you need around £40,000 worth of investments to even start to get close to that. And that would be in the investment pot outside of your stocks and shares ISA. If you only ever use an ISA, you'd never have to pay tax on any dividends at all. In fact, if you had a £1 million investment portfolio in your stocks and shares ISA and got 5% a year in dividends, that's 50K a year tax-free of income, which is the equivalent of earning a taxable income of around £89,000 per year. Not bad at all. It just shows how important it is to be savvy when it comes to using your tax-free allowances. Also, don't forget that you've got your capital gains allowance too, which for the current tax year is £12,300. This means that any assets you sell, including stocks, you can make a profit of £12,300 before you've got to pay any taxes. Again, it's only applicable to things outside of your ISA, so it might be useful if, like me, you've got a lot of your portfolio outside an ISA because you had no idea what you were doing a few years back when you wanted to start gradually move things inside one. One trick you can do, and what I'll probably end up doing, is selling my shares eventually, making sure that I don't make more than £12,300 profit on each one, and then taking that cash and sticking it into my ISA see if I can actually max it out each year. That's one thing I'm considering at the moment, but I'm not quite at a stage where the individual shares are in profit by that kind of level. Remember that if you're new to the channel, you can follow along with all of my investing portfolios, which include my Vanguard ISA, my Hargreaves Lansdowne SIP and general account, as well as a free trade UK dividend portfolio. And I've even got a new account with Lightyear who I've used to snap up a few of those US stocks after the big sell-off recently. Look out for a portfolio review on that one pretty soon. All right then, the secrets of the ISA millionaires are out. Be consistent, invest for the long term, make sure you ignore the noise in the short term and buy quality companies and investments by making the most of all your tax-free allowances. Even if you don't make it to the magic seven figure mark, all of the lessons remain the same. Now I'd love to see every adult in the UK with a stocks and shares ISA putting away a portion of their income every month because in the long run, we know how powerful it can be to grow well. If you're looking to start out on the journey and need help, I've got loads of videos that might be helpful for you. Firstly, if you're looking to start from the beginning, check out my complete beginner's guide to investing here. Or if you know the basics and want to get started right away, have a look at my popular guide to some of the best stocks and shares ISA providers here in the UK. Because you might want to make sure that you get started before the new tax year begins, which is just in a few more days. Especially if you've got money lying around in a savings account or some spare cash. If you've enjoyed the video, please drop me a big fat like. It really helps out the channel. Subscribe for many more and I'll see you in the next video. As always, happy investing.